Ja mä... Gini. Jo, 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 And I was wondering, but you were the offending party. Why didn't you go and slap the man in his <laughs> And of course, he was showing the middle finger. And yeah. yeah, there you go. So there you go. Lewis Hamilton coming from ninth to yeah. finish second. Mm -hmm. driving one Admitting to making a rare mistake. But he, he did you see he him on his haunches with his, yeah, his yeah, hand yeah, during yeah, the break? Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Lewis realized that he transgressed yeah, badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did finish off the podium. Anyway, uh, to uh, motorsport, but one that requires a totally different skill set. Jamaica's first rallycross champion, Fraser McConnell, is making his mark on the international stage on his debut at the Rallycross Nordic Championship in 2020, that was last year. McConnell finished second behind his colleague at auto racing team Olsbergs. So this is the schedule. Four races in this season's Rallycross Championship. And ahead of the opening event in Denmark, McConnell warmed up with a test run in Bogwalk St. Catherine. Our producer, Valentina Thompson, was there for the ride. The Jamaican champion of 2019 has taken a brilliant win here in Mid-Ohio and you know what that means to him. We're here with Fraser McConnell, uh, Jamaica's first rally champion. How do you feel to have that accolade? Boy, it's a real honour and privilege. I'm privileged enough to be the only Jamaican that's ever gone overseas and competed in rallycross. Actually, the only man from the Caribbean to do it as well. So um, doing that and being able to put them on the map in Rallycross is a huge privilege for me. Um, and thankfully, some sponsors have come on board, Burrito has come on board, um, KIG, Puma, to be able to help me go up there and, and compete this year again at the, at the highest level in the Scandinavian countries. Um, and we're just using this as a little practice session out at True Juice to get back used to the feeling of the car because it's been a while. Um, and just invited out some other rally guys to get the competition flowing and have a fun day. How close is it to the, the format of Nordic? Ah, uh, well, what I'm going up to is side-by-side -side racing. This is a rally car which runs on a time close stage by itself, running against the clock. Rally cross is five cars lining up against each other side-by-side, -side, going on the green light, and it's very short, four laps, but, I mean, intense, and you're running against the clock in the beginning, but you're still racing each other, so it's a lot of strategy that comes into play, trying to pass and be clean and save time, but also, you know, win at the same time. Tell me about the team that you raced for in Sweden, Augsburg. Yeah, man, OMSC is the best in the business up there. That's why we joined with them. They approached us when we were competing in America and just wanted some, some, something different. Um, the Ericsson's take me in like family every time I'm up there. I live with them. They, they run OMSC and they, they, just, they just operate at a very professional standard that I'm taking notes from and learning from them every single second I'm with them. So they're, they're a huge part of my my, my progress in, in driving, um, both on and off the track. And I'm just going to use what they taught me throughout the last couple of years to put, go on the stop, top step this year. And it was a one-two finish in the Nordic Championship. Right. You finished second on 91 points. Your teammate had a 111 points yeah, in was, first. It was close, but it was my first year competing in the supercar, his third year. Um, it was my first time going to compete at all of those tracks, and he had driven them a number of times. Um, but, I mean, apart from that, he's a brilliant driver. I learned a lot from him. And this year, we're working together to, to try to do that one, two again. But right. I'm going to be trying to go for the one this time. So you mentioned that you raced in the super class last year, but that wasn't how it was supposed to be. No. But because of the COVID-19, yeah. you got the chance. Tell me about that. Yeah, so when COVID actually came about, it gave us that opportunity to step up into the supercar class. And we were taking it one event at a time. The first event was just to get our feet wet, see if we could handle those rough waters. And we ended up performing very well, making it to the final in the first weekend. Mm -hmm. And with that, we say it would have been a shame to not continue and put myself in a new environment with a new track, um, some new competitors. And they even the world champion, three-time world champion, Johan Christopherson, even came into the mix. And that was just one up, tick off my checklist to race against the best in the world. So the first race for this season is set for Denmark? First event in Denmark, first and second of May. 
and then the second event is in Sweden, um, I think 13th, 14th, and then we go to Finland, which is going to be a new track for everybody, and then we finish in Sweden. Is there a disadvantage being a Caribbean driver of among That's more hard. established drivers? Well, I mean, I look at it from a perspective of instead of having all that pressure, I get all that support from all the Caribbean countries. I mean, I can't tell you how far it goes with my confidence and my drive, and I'm not going up there to, to just place, you know, or, or, or just fill up the field. I'm going there to do my best and try to get on that top step and, and show the world that not only Jamaica but the Caribbean, we have it. So what about facilities? Um, here you have to practice on the dirt track. Do you think that's a disadvantage? I mean, you could look at it that way, but I'm using what I have. I, I can't look at them and be envious of them practicing on their track and getting that experience. I'm using what I have out there in Bogwalk, Chujus, to extract as much as I can. And then with that, I'm mixing some go-karting out at Palisados. So, I mean, it might not be the best possible perfect world practice situation, but I'm using everything I have um, to, to make sure I'm fully prepared. And your campaign this season will be boosted by Barita, one of your sponsors. That's right. Or how instrumental were they? Well, I can't tell you how much Barita has helped coming on board. I mean, we also have to give thanks to Puma, they've come on board. Um, KIG has also come on, Sandals has been a long time sponsor. Um, KIG with the, with the Subaru they're providing me and they're also helping me overseas because it's going to be in a Ford. Uh, Rainforest Seafood and you can't, you can't forget Uncle Sal. So yeah, yeah. everybody is going to be on that suit and uh, getting, I'll, I'll try to give them their best value for money possible. Now it's just great to get back in the car and you know get that sideways feeling again. Like I said, it's been August since the last time I've been in the, the race car. It, it definitely prepares you just you know, on the loose surface and gets your eyes back, back adjusted to the speed. And now just have to clear your head and go up into Sweden now and jump in the beast. I'm feeling very good. Um, each run that he went out, he was faster than he was before. Um, this is really about testing and tuning and just getting him ready for the upcoming event. This is the start of a great relationship and we're just looking forward to whatever the partnership will bring. The best I can look for is first and that's what I'm going for. Now it's just a matter of time and getting on the track and doing the thing. Yeah, that's the bad man, Fraser McConnell. He leaves Jamaica on Tuesday for Sweden to link up with his team. He joins us now on the Sports Mag Zone along with the voice of Rallycross commentator, Andrew Coley. Hello, Fraser. Hello, Andrew. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing well. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. All is well? Oh, it's late here in the UK, but I'm staying up for Jamaica and the Caribbean. You know, it's all good. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, we up Andrew Coley. Yeah, we appreciate your effort and your hustle, man. Uh, Fraser, tell us, though, uh, uh, when you leave for Sweden, you land in Sweden, what happens between that point and when you sit in the car for the race? Well, I go to the team in, in Nina Sam, Sweden, OMSE. Uh, greet everybody, um, catch up, you know, see the, everyone at the workshop, get a little involved in packing up the truck and getting ready. And we get involved in a test session in a nearby track about an hour away, which we always go to before a race. So we have a very good benchmark of where we should be before a race scenario with what we've given um, the track conditions. We have all, all the different refer references for each type of weather condition there. So we know if we're on pace and need to step it up or what have you. How will you function? Well, how do you plan to function mentally now, Fraser, given that you're not just any old guy on the rallycross circuit anymore? You're, you're that man with that huge bullseye on his back. Everybody's coming for you. No, man, not at all. I've been locked in for a long time. I've, I've been looking forward <laughs> to the season getting started since the last race ended in the 2020 season. I mean, it, it's always a, a, a growing progress in developing your mental, mental strength for this sport because it, it can really take a toll on you, your confidence and... You need to know how to be able to bring yourself out of a out of a ditch per se if you have a bad event and I mean um, just have that mental strength to get right back on the horse and go 100% right out the gates again. I noticed in your interview with our guys on the weekend you said that you well you were you were testing a Subaru in Bogwa but you say you were driving a Ford. What are the is there any material difference between the machine that you practice in and the one that you're actually going to race? What kind of adjustments will you have to make? 
Oh gosh, man, the one I'm going to go drive in Sweden is a is an absolute beast. It's 600 horsepower, goes zero to 100 in just under two seconds, and that's the car that every rallycross driver dreams to drive. Is a supercar because you just you get kind of tunnel vision. It, it at first it feels so unreal that you're going so fast, so quick, and out here the the Subaru is a group end rally car, which is a spec kind of series to keep it more a level playing field for more people to enter. So it's not as um, adrenaline pumping or um, what's the word? Kind of you don't you don't really need pampas to jump in the Subaru, but when you get in the Ford for the first time after a long ride, you take a while to get back to full speed. Mm. Andrew, welcome to the Sportsman Zone again. Um, talk to us about uh, Fraser and um, his rise to the levels that he's now ha now at. H how exciting is he as a young as, as a young driver for you to call races on? Yeah, he's very exciting. It's interesting. I was speaking to Fraz earlier on today, and we realised that I think I've commentated every rally cross race he's, he's ever done. So he's he's struggling to get rid of me. I'm afraid he um, <laughs> he burst onto the scene for us in America's rally cross in 2018, and he was. Uh, I, I think Fraz will understand when I say he was wild. He was sideways <laughs> everywhere, spectacular to watch. But but he had his sights set on on progressing. And when when I saw him the following year, you know, he he started the training already, the mental side of things, tidying up his driving style. And he won the championship in 2019. And and he took some brilliant wins against guys who had a a much higher reputation than him in the sport. Uh, last year, jumped into a car with twice the power into the supercar, and and did a brilliant job again. So you know he's only, he can only go one better this year. It's P2 last year. I know he's aiming for P1 this year, and uh, I, with how hard he's trying, I, I wouldn't bet against him. I'm looking forward to to seeing where the Jamaican flag ends up this year. Yeah, I seem to recall him winning one of the events in Canada. I think I saw a video on that. Would you have been the commentator there as well? I would have been the commentator there. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Uh, Pre-COVID, we were traveling an awful lot with the sport. So, yeah, Fraz has, has done some support category racing with the World Championship as well. So that's a category called RX2. He then won ARX2, which was the support category in the States. And, and he's got his sights set on supercars now in both Nordic. And, and later this year, I know he's looking to race in America again as well. So hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll be there to commentate all the action with him. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, the Caribbean and Jamaica in particular are well known for producing track and field stars at uh, big Olympic Games and so on. So how shocking has it been for you to see a driver with so much skill coming from this part of the world? It's, it's been fantastic. I mean, you know, rallycross is, is very much a, a European sport. And I think, you know, most of our drivers have come from Scandinavia, where a lot of people are, are racing on gravel surfaces on a, a more regular basis. So they're used to driving on those, those slippery surfaces. And, and we, you know, for, to see the Jamaican flag, the first time I saw Fraz at Cota, the circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, I thought, oh, we got a Jamaican here. Like, we better head down to the paddock and go and see what's going on. <laughs> what was going on usually at the end of the day is, is a nice family atmosphere, you know, and, and a bit of a party if they've had a good result. There's always Jamaican flags are, around the track. And now on Instagram, I'm getting messages from people having parties and all, all around the Caribbean watching Fraz race. So I, you know, I think he's a bit of a phenomenon and, and I'm enjoying seeing that style. I like the sideways style, but you know, he's tidied it up a bit. He's got a bit more Lewis Hamilton now. This was a great pass around the outside at Barcelona. This was one of the ultimate passes. You can't pass around the outside there. And Fraz just stuck it on, uh, was it Calio? I think he managed to pass there. Brilliant drive, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, he's been turning heads, definitely. Yeah, Fraser, we're, we're out of time, but I have to ask you, you can't do this thing without support, and we know that you have some strong corporate support in your corner. Tell me about the assistance that the folks at Marita have given you on this journey. Your mic, is your mic muted? Yeah, let's go. Are you hearing oh, us now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, apology. you're good. Yeah. No. Barita is currently the main sponsor at the moment. Uh, I can't thank them enough. Them coming on board is really making a difference for me. Um, I just have to thank them for putting their trust in me and knowing that they're going to get more over their value for money. I'm going to do everything I can to represent them and make sure that when, when I'm standing on the top step, the Barita sign is very visible on the suit. Yeah, well, Andrew, we hope that you have the strength of voice to continue doing a good job. And for Fraser, all we will say is that may the force continue to be with you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good, good, Thanks, good. Thanks, guys. All right, Andrew all right. Fraser, all the best. Fraser McConnell, Rallycross star. And uh, the man is rising fast. He's in a hurry to get to the very top and beyond. And let me tell you, he's worth following, you know. Go on social media. You can check out his exploits real time. He is something special.